Hello and welcome back to TCG Opolis. We have a very special video for y'all today. As you may know, Caldeheim pre-release just happened this weekend. So we will be opening an entire draft booster box. So here we go. This is actually going to be my very first Magic the Gathering video. Magic the Gathering is definitely the TCG game that I played the most. Oh, look, it's actually made in Japan. So, your victory has been foretold, and I really hope so, because there are a ton of awesome cards that I really would like to pull in this box. So, let's go ahead and get cracking. Uh, I've actually looked at most of the spoilers, but there are a lot of cards in here that I do not know what they are. So, we're going to be looking together. I always like how the wrappers for the Rooster Rex have that official Wizards of the Coast symbol on it, so... Here we go. Oh, such a good sound. So that one, we pop it open. If I can, pop it open. Wow, look at that. 36 whole packs. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, so I, obviously I think they're... Two main planeswalkers with Kaya and the new planeswalker Nico Eris, but there's also a lot of other good stuff. Whoa, where? Oh shoot, they are they are that direction. Well, <laughs> we know that we got a foil in this pack, but should have noticed from the token. The token usually starts on this side, so we'll go ahead and do it like this. So we have our vault robber. Man, this is gonna take a long time like this. I'll probably switch it up. Aggie mob. Infernal Pet, Glaring Frost, Demonic Gifts, Wings of the Cosmos, Iron Verdict, Rush Ashore, Arnie Slays the Troll. If y'all don't know much about this set, it kind of has a, uh, a Nordic theme to it. There's the Path to the World Tree. Very nice, very nice. So a lot of the cards feature... You know, see, look at that, like, Viking-like looking different tattoos on this guy's arm. And, you know, this one has, like, you know, that runic look to it. So we'll go ahead and put our rares in one pile and our foils in one pile so that we can go ahead and look back at those at the end of the video. I think I'm just going to open them how they come. And also save us a lot of time. We have 36 different packs to go through, so... I don't want to spend too much time on each pack. Alrighty, getting to our second pack. We got our token. Our land. Ho ho ho! Right off the bat. There we go. So, although most of the full arts came out in the uh, Zendikar, there are a few more that did not come out. And so the rest of those are in this set. This is a blue white one. So as you can see, you have the white plains area with the nice ruined trees. And look at that right there. Under the blue one, we have a beautiful blue sea. A little Viking boat traveling through it. Even the simple, there's a freaking X. Man, so we are starting off hot. We got the Rune of Might. Another Saga. Sagas are also back, and they are a lot more powerful than they normally are. And uh, another thing that's back is the snow theme. There's definitely a bunch of snow theme cards or cards that benefit from from snow in them. So another thing I really like about Magic the Gathering is pretty much oh we already have another foil. Pretty much every pack you're guaranteed a rare. Unlike in uh, Pokemon. Uh, in Magic, most rares have pretty decent value, but in Pokemon, only the uh, Ultra Rares and uh, GX and EX cards like that have value. It's very rare that uh, Hollows or Reverse Hollows have any value to them. But with Magic, there's uh, even the regular rares have value to them. Unlike, you know, Foils and Full Arts, the regular rares actually hold their own. So there's that. There's the land, and we have the... Robert Necromancer. Looky there. Look at that artwork. They really have been stepping up their game recently. Make sure there's nothing else in here in the wrong spot. 
Islands. All right, we're chilling. Get into another one. Man, I really don't like how they're they're backwards like this. But you know, it is what it is. Oh, another foil. How do we already have three foil hits and glory god of kinship? As long as you control three or more legendary creatures, glory gets plus two or plus four plus two and has vigilance. So it's a four drop that if you have three creatures, it'll become a six six with vigilance. And it can also search for legendary creatures in the top six. So pretty good, pretty good. A nice berserker right there. But yeah, they definitely they definitely brought back or brought in a bunch of new pretty nice cards in there, so Alright, let's go ahead and get the, get the next one. Oh yeah, Tybalt is actually another Planeswalker, but he's not like the regular Planeswalkers. He is actually a flip Planeswalker, so he comes in as a little creature, but uh, he can be flipped into this enormous 7-drop Planeswalker. Oh, I've seen this one. So another... Like I said, the snow lane came back, and as you can see, this is a 1-1 one, one spirit creature that comes out for a blue. But you see these little symbols, let me get a little closer. These are actually snow symbols, so this means it doesn't have to be blue, it just has to be any snow-covered land. And uh, basically this one right here, you buff it up slowly. So you see, you play it on the first turn, it's a 1-1, one, one, but it becomes a 2-3 on the second turn if you play two snow lands. And it can pretty much go all the way up to a... 6-6, six, six, which whenever it deals combat damage, it, you get to draw a card. So, it can ha it has some pretty crazy abilities. But it's like a, a little investment kind of thing, you know. It's a 1-1, one, one, but it has potential to become bigger. So, yeah, I think snow-covered lands are pretty useful, but uh, these flip lands are definitely way better. I mean, basically I like having a card that is too basic lands at one time. The only difference is that it cannot be searched like the like the basic lands. Blood on the snow. Look at that. Destroy all creatures or destroy all planeswalkers. And then return a creature planeswalker with conveyor cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of snow lands. So like I said, there's a lot of snow synergy in this set. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. It's kind of sad that there wasn't an official pre-release play because this definitely would have been one of the fun sets. Same thing with Zendikar. We didn't have an official, you know, like, sanctioned pre-release events. And it really would have been a whole lot of fun to see how that would have played out. So we have a token, our land, and Mr. Predator. And when it becomes tapped, exile up to one target card from your graveyard and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. That's pretty good value right there. Man, is that thing really going to close on me right now? Not cool, not cool. I have a solution. Alright. There you go. Boom. It's not closing anymore. Alrighty. Let's get into our next pack. Look at that giant wizard token right there. So pretty. Even these, they're tap lands, but unlike regular tap lands, they are, you know... Both plains and islands, and their snowlands. So, it's pretty. Oh, hoo -hoo, buddy, we already getting out. We get some pretty monster hits. This is actually a Phyrexian Praetor. Pretty interesting to see a Phyrexian in this set, but Phyrexian and a Praetor is so one of the big boys. This one is just gnarly. It's a six drop six six, and it has trample and hay, so you know, make it a big hitter itself, but. Anytime you put one or more counters on a permanent or a player, you put twice that many counters instead. And if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent player, they only put half as many as each kind of those kinds of counters. So it's definitely a big thing with counters, and you know, green runs a lot of stuff like that. So that's a pretty good card for that color. Alrighty. Next back. Hopefully we can pull a Tibble so I can show you. He's pretty He's pretty gnarly. The fact that he gets a he's a creature and a planeswalker. This the flip cards are pretty crazy. This is actually another another of the uh, and uh, another of the things that was introduced is foretell. So essentially, 
you cast the card down face down and exile for two colorless mana so it can be any type and on another turn you can play it for the foretell cost which is pretty much always cheaper than the regular one so let's say this one you play it face down on turn two and then once you have that three mana the next turn you're going to be able to play it for three mana instead of the four mana so most of the time it's a little cheaper um, or it's a little cheaper just to play it regularly but with the foretell you always get it out on an early turn see this kind of nordic theme to the set it's just very pretty all the cards really look amazing so let's keep going a bunch of packs left so let's see what we can get it's our token one alpine meadow okay we got another foil so common this time and Tosky Bear's Secrets. This is actually a squirrel. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is a uncounterable, indestructible 1-1 one, one squirrel. That is cost 4 mana, and it is able to attack each combat if able. And if it does combat, you get to draw a card. So it's not really a blocker, but it's you know kind of like a little hidden value card that we have in this set. Let's go ahead and open another pack. See what we can get from this one. Alright. Low Warrior Token on our land. Oh, a foil snow covered swamp. Look at that. So pretty. And Sigrid, God favorite. This is one of the legendary humans. First strike protection from gods, which a lot of gods were introduced, and they're always gods across different set even if they're not a bunch where it enters the battlefield exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature it's just a little flash exile so you know you can really get rid of but it also has that thing that the creature has to be attacking or blocking for it to be exiled so the blocking part makes it useful the target attacking creature would have been a little rough i mean you do get attacked but target attacking and blocking makes it a whole lot better because you know you're not always on the attack here. A lot of times you're on the defense. There's that snow covered swamp that I just got in foil. And Pyre of Heroes. A little creature that lets you sack creatures, or a little artifact that lets you sack creatures to search for different creatures. But it has to share the, uh, the creature type with that creature. And it has to have a converted mana cost equal to just one above. That's a little, it's a little specific, but you do get to put it directly onto the battlefield, so I guess that is good. Get to our next one. That one opened nicely. Alrighty. We got a little bird token, one one bird. Our snow land. Oh, we got a foil for running short. Look at that art right there. Just a giant wave with the flag crashing over. And in search of greatness. No enchantment upkeep card. That's actually a little squirrel. I just got earlier. And it cast a... Oh, I've seen this one. So this one is where you get to cast a con, uh, spell with converted mana cost equal to one uh, higher than the converted mana cost across permanents you control. And so you get to play that for free. So let's say you have play this. Next turn you would be able to play a three drop for free. And then the turn after that you'd be able to play a four drop for free and if you don't activate the ability you get to scry so it's a pretty pretty useful card nothing crazy but also pretty useful there's another saga in there oh shoot this is gonna give me trouble trying to finish from the bottom there we go there we go there we go there's our token Snow covered mountain. Oh, yeah. Oh, Maskwood Nexus. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So, all your creatures. Oh, so this helps with searching for and. Dang, all creatures are every creature type? That's pretty nuts right there. That is pretty nuts. Yeah, look at that artwork right there. Pretty crazy. Since that one was dual colored, you know, you kind of had a blue pillar, and you had a red pillar. Get into our next one. Have a 
spirit token. Arsenal went in and rallied the ranks. Basic. Oh, a little Lord enchantment for any creature type, essentially. There's the battlefield. You choose one, and all those creature types get plus one, plus one, just for two mana. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Got a little pretty owl in there. Cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand. Draw a card. Not too terrible. Not too terrible. It is kind of hard to cast spells from not your hand, but that would work a lot, pretty well with uh, Fortel and. Um, also, the cards from Throne of Eldraine, since, you know, they're in exile, so they're not technically in your hand. There we go. We got one of the gods. This is the god of battle. This is Halvar, god of battle. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or an equipment to a creature you control or target creature you don't control. It probably has an equipment. There we go. Sword of the Realms. Plus two, plus zero, and vigilance. And when it dies, return it to its owner's hand. So if you play it like this and equip it to a creature, whenever that creature dies, you can, you know, bring him out. So it's not too much of a hassle to play it out early. And look at that. Other creatures get plus one, plus one. And you get a white human every time you play land. That's pretty stupid on its own. Pretty good on commons in the set. I noticed that there are actually quite a few common cards there. Pretty powerful on their own, so. That's a lot of good stuff in the set. A lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff. I'm actually pretty glad because all these new sets are bringing in new cards so that by the time that standard is sanctioned again, we're going to have some crazy decks to play with. One less to cast for each snow land you control. Oh, shoot. That's a 12 drop. Enters the battlefield. Artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. Don't untap. Return three snow lands and then return it to its owner's hand. Mm, okay, okay, not too bad. I mean, very situational 8 8, but still pretty cool. Pretty cool. Got some. Oh, I got an artifact on one set. Giants, or there are also quite a few really good giants in this set that I'm interested to pull. There's a giant blue one called Stormbreaker Giant. You can, like, cast giant spells from your hand for free or something like that. Something crazy. Comas Coil. Maybe we'll get a, a coma to go with it. Oh, no way. We got our foil card. Maybe there should be another one. This is the same card that we just got earlier. Ho, ho, ho. My gosh. There is the Sword of the Realms and the Shiny Art. Should I put this with foil or should I put this? Yeah, we'll put it with foil. And we got Vagaroth, Bloody Sire. Death Touch, 3 drop, 2, 3 that you can boast. Oh! Whoa, that is an insane boast ability. Target player searches their library for a card, shovels it, and puts that card on top of it? Oh my, that is crazy. Some crazy stuff in here. Jeez. That was a really good pack. We got an alternate art rare and then an alternate art foil rare myth. Shoot. There we go. We got our snow land. Seekus chariot vehicles. There are also a few vehicles in this set now. I think about it. it makes two to do cats or four. And whenever it attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token creature you control. Not bad, not bad. Now, this is actually a card that I plan on using eventually. So, I'm going to set it aside. I think we've gone pretty well through the deck. Or, er, the booster box. We still got quite a few more to go, so let's keep cracking. We've got a little Elf Warrior token. And we got a Snow Covered Mountain. And Crippling Fear. Choose a creature type. Creatures that aren't the chosen type get minus three, minus three until end of turn. This is kind of the opposite of Witch's Vengeance from Throne of Eldraine. Witch's Vengeance from Throne of Eldraine made it so that uh, you choose a creature type, and that creature type gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. But this one makes it so that the opposite, the, the creature type is safe. And then, oh, we got another. Oh my goodness, we are doing crazy. Look at that. So we got a foil rare, and then we got a mythic right here. Flying life link and hexproof from planeswalkers. 
and you can boast it to sack a creature, and each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, which is nuts, because you can sack a creature and cost them a planeswalker. And for a 4-drop, four 4-3 four, with Flying Lifelink and Hexproof and planeswalkers, pretty nice, pretty nice. Another nice pack. Man, we are going crazy with this box right now. Keep going. Still looking for that that Tybalt or even a Kaya, some sort of Planeswalker. Oh, a Mystic Reflection. I actually got to play this card on Arena. You get to copy any non-legendary creature and all creatures that come out of that turn are copies of that creature. So it can be used defensively, you know, if they, they're about to play something crazy, you can instant it out and copy some 1-1 one, one, and all their creatures that come out are 1-1s. One, or it can be for you, you can copy one of your big creatures and all your dinks come out of that. And then we come back to back, back to back foil and rares. Death touch and at the beginning of your upkeep, exile two cards from your graveyard. If you can't, sacrifice Egon and draw a card. Shoot, that's actually pretty crazy. Oh, because he's a 3-drop 6-6. Six, six. Jeez Louise, that's pretty nuts. This artifact is the Throne of Death. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. So his throne actually kind of fuels him. And exile a creature card from your graveyard and draw a card. Not bad, not bad. I actually kind of like this eyes. A 3-drop three 3-3. Three, three. But you do have to have quite a bit of cards in your graveyard to actually fuel him and keep him going. So... Get the next pack. Alrighty. Oh, look at that. There's the foretell token. So, you know, you have a little section to put your foretell cards. Dream Devourer. Man, that is kind of scary looking. A 0 3 2 drop. Each non land card in your hand without foretell has foretell. Its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2. Jeez, that's pretty nuts. So it basically gives all your cards foretell. It's only two drops, so it could get out pretty freaking early. That's nuts. What's that Aquar and the regular one? Alrighty, the next pack. Man, we're still missing a planeswalker. Come on. Booster box isn't complete without a planeswalker. Treasure. You didn't even know treasure was back. That's something I missed, I guess. Finally, we got a rare, uh, rare saga. Exile top four cards of your library, and you get to play those until the end of your next turn. Whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Well, it's okay, it's okay, nothing crazy, but, you know, it's not bad, it's not bad. Alrighty, looks like we have about nine, oh shoot, no, no, we, more. No, we got 12 more packs. So we're two-thirds of the way through the box. Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. All right, there that. Look at that zombie bracer. He looks nuts. Snow-covered planes. And another red saga. All right. Frost and fire, four damage to each non-giant creature. It is a five drop, so that's pretty nuts. Scry three. And whenever you cast a spell with converted mana, it costs five or greater this turn. Draw two cards and discard a card. Not bad, not bad. Let's keep shutting these facts down. Alrighty. Our Arctic Tree Line and Reckless. Sure, this is not a very good card, but it's a four drop to create X Dwarf Berserkers, where X is the number of vehicles and equipment. Equipment, you know, there's a decent amount of equipment, but vehicles and equipment for four drop, man, not very useful. It's just, you have to run a deck with a ton of equipment and vehicles. And many times, those are like the two least used uh, different artifacts. It's just standard artifacts that are used a lot. But vehicles and equipment, some equipment's pretty good, you know. But most of it is not, not that great. Alright, we got a foil. King Harald's Revenge. And Search for Glory. Little art card with Nico Aris in it. For a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card, and put it into your hand. That's actually pretty good. And you get to gain a life for each uh, each snowman I used to cast it. So, not a bad card at all. Not a bad card. Next one, we're getting close to the bottom of this box. Got a 
treasure token, a volatile fjord, and a reflection of the jar. Choose a creature type, and whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. That's pretty crazy. It is a five drop, though, so you got some work to get it out, you know. Got a little bit of work to get out. Alright. There's our snow in, and we got a rare. Oh, Tyrite Sanctum. It's a land, a colorless land. Target legendary creature becomes a god in its addition to its other types. Put the counter on it. Then you sack it to put an indestructible counter on target god. That's pretty nuts. Kind of sucks that it only works on uh, gods, but this actually does make it a god. So I guess, I guess it'll work in more than just a few ways. I actually have a colorless commander deck, so I put that in there. As, you know, it is a colorless land, but that has abilities on its own. So. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Here we go. Got our token. Look over land. Oh, we got a foil. Invoke the divine. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Four life. Alrighty. And Doomscar. I was just talking to my dad about this card. This card is nuts. So, here you can foretell it for two colorless. So, on your second turn, you can set up a freaking destroy all creatures for pretty much any turn you want. I mean, it is a sorcery, but still. A three mana destroy all creatures for your other turns. I mean, that's definitely worth the investment of two mana. And if you think about it, this right here is literally just three colorless and two white. So that equals to the regular mana cost. So there's no downfall of foretelling it. It's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. There's Path to the Royal Tree. A Royal Tree would be another awesome card to pull. So now we're getting down there. We got four, five, six more packs. All right. Let's work some magic on these last few packs. We already had a great box, but... I know there's still some good cards in there. Look at the art. I mean, that's just a basic snow cover for us. Oh, we got another foil. A lifelink tutu. And, oh, Bergy got a storytelling. Cast a spell, I read. And until the end of turn, you don't lose mana as steps and at phases end. And you can boast creatures twice instead of once. And it also turns into a little artifact that lets you uh, discard and exile the top two cards. You get to play those. So it's kind of, you know, like... You discard the card, and you can use the top two cards for your library. So, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, nothing crazy. I doubt that card will see play, but it'd be nice to, you know, pull in a pre-release deck. See what you can get going there. Alrighty, next one. Look at that shard. This is actually Nico Eris' shard. Maybe that means we got a Nico Eris. You never know. You never know. Calamity Bear. Giant Berserker. If a giant source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double damage to that permanent or player instead. Pretty nuts, pretty nuts. Oh, look at that. There's, oh, this is Harold. He's actually one of the pack arts. Let's see. Get this one right here. Right there, we got a Harold, King of Skim Farm. Menace, and when it enters the battlefield, look at the top five. Reveal an elf, warrior, or Tyvar card from among them and put it into your hand. Now that's pretty nuts, and it's only a 3-drop, three 3-2 three with mass, so... Pretty good card on its own. Pretty good card on its own. Alrighty. Come on, give me a Planeswalker. Give me a Planeswalker. Oh, I am not complaining. Shoot, we got a full art mythic. That is nuts. Five drop five four. Your opponents cannot gain life. And at the beginning of your upkeep, it deals two damage to each opponent. This ability only triggers if Quake Ringer is on the battlefield, or if Quake Ringer is on the battlefield in the graveyard, and another giant you control is on the battlefield. So that's pretty nuts. So you can actually have a few of these in your graveyard. Let's say you had one Quake Ringer out and two in your graveyard. That triggers three times that turn. Which is pretty ridiculous, just because you only have to have uh, a giant on the battlefield, and he can be in the graveyard. Alright, we are almost done with this box, guys. We're almost done. Snow covered. Oh, there we go. We got the green god. It looks, that's pretty odd. Look, 
This other one is his artifact is not even the same color. Three mana, three three. When he attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. Now that that's pretty stupid. You snow permanent untap. This is a legendary snow artifact. You may play target snow permanent card from your graveyard this turn. If you do, there's battlefield tapped. So this is definitely gonna be if you plan on playing with snow cards, that's definitely a must have, at least if you're in that color. Alrighty, looks like we are on our last two packs. I can go ahead and remove the box. Slide our giant stack of rares in there and then our stack of foils. Shoot. Okay, I'll show y'all those cards before we end the video. Wrapping it up here with the last two packs. Let's see what we can get. We've got our token, our snow covered forest, and waking of the trolls. Destroy target land. Man, that's different. Put target land card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And choose target opponent. If they control fewer lands than you, create a number of four, four green troll warrior tokens with trample equal to the difference. A little bit of odd of a card. Oh my goodness, just look how pretty those cards are. Okay. A little bit odd of a card there for a little saga. Alright. Next one. And the last pack. So let's see if we can get some last pack magic and get that. Get a planeswalker in this box. All right, human warrior, woodland chasm. Oh, we got something. We got something. Oh, ho, ho. we got her. Let's go. This is Asika, god of the tree. So as you can tell, this is a three mana one four vigilance mana dork that does add one mana of any color, any color. That's nuts. And other legendary creatures do control have vigilance and add one mana of any color. That's crazy. And let's look at the prismatic bridge. That is crazy. This is one mana of every color. So like, <laughs> like you can tell here, this card kind of helps getting it out. But at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature planeswalker and put that card on the battlefield. And put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. So this enchantment literally gets you a free creature or planeswalker every upkeep. And it doesn't even put those other cards in your graveyard. They just go to the bottom of your library. So this is definitely a good card to end, end on. Look how pretty. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and look at all the stuff we ended up getting. And here we have our foils, you know. Got a little common foil there. Another common foil. Common. There's our Dream Devourer foil. Oh, he's actually not foil. I just put him in the wrong the stack. Okay. Mystic Reflection. Another rare. Crippling Fear. Another rare. And we got another. Our Mythic foil. Halvar. Another Icebreaker Kraken. I guess he got in the wrong wrong stack himself. Common foil. Hot Snow Covered Swamp. Another common. Uncommon. Uncommon. And uncommon foil. So we got. That's some pretty gnarly cards with our foils, uh, especially that half of our both alt art and foil. So pretty nice. Not to mention he's a mythic on his own. We actually only got one of the flip lands, but you'll see that he was one of our first pulls. So there's a dream devourer, icebreaker crack, and there's that god of the tree we got the first time. Waking the trolls. A flip card action in there. We caught out the winner. Quakebringer Full Art, Lamity Bear, this is also another, another Gods, Doom Scar, pretty, right, I guess I'll go ahead and set these in there. Another great removal card, that's gonna be, you're definitely gonna see that, It'll probably be a little annoying eventually. Search for Glory, Reckless Crew, Battle of Frost and Fire, Showdown of the Skulls, God of Death in here, another Mythic. Sickest Chariot. Oh, look at that. That card. I just love that card. That's a great ability. Searches their library for a card and shuffles that and puts it on top for two mana. You can do that once every turn. That's nuts. There's our Halvar. Fire of the Ranks. Maskwood Nexus. Search of Greatness. Fire of Heroes. Sigrid. Cosmos Charger. There's our Phyrexian Prayer. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Vampire Dragon. Some more removal, little chargeable spirit. It's a god of kinship. 
little zombie cleric necromancer. Roll and to end it off, we have that beautiful land. Look at that. And the plains one is actually just. Oh shoot, I dropped it. There's that one. The plains side is just beautiful as well. Look at that. Just gorgeous. All right. Once again, thank you all guys so much for uh, watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and drop a sub. And um, I actually have another Magic the Other video coming out this Wednesday. It is a uh, set review for Jumpstart. And so that'll be a, another fun video to watch. It's a really good set. And, you know, it's a little bit underrated. People don't, people don't talk about it as much as they should. And then on Thursday, I also have a Pokemon Charizard hunting uh, video. So make sure to tune in that for, that for that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, y'all have a great rest of the week. See y'all later.